Hey everyone, Nubkex here, welcome back to Here's the Storm, playing on the live servers today and bringing you some gameplay of The Lost Vikings. Uh, I thought this game would be particularly helpful for you guys because I don't think my mechanics are very good in this game. In fact, I made a whole ton of mistakes, played things real bad, my reaction times are terrible, but it was still hard. Actually quite a, a very effective game on the Vikings and in fact I ended up with one of the guys from the enemy team on my team in the next game I was just playing a few for fun basically warming up for the PTR which was coming out uh, at the time this was recording uh, And he was like saying oh my god like you're all over the map It was such a pain to deal with and I was kind of going oh really what oh I thought I actually played all things considered fairly badly And um, this sort of ties into what I think about the Vikings which kind of surprises some people let me say, well, there's three heroes. It's going to be really intensive on your micro, right? You have to be really fast, you know, uh, have a really high APM, be doing a whole lot of stuff. I don't think that's actually the case. In fact, I think with the Vikings, the most important thing is actually your macro skills, like knowing where to go, where is safe, um, you know, where to push, when to back off. And if you can do that right, if you can, if, you, if you're just putting the Vikings in the right places, essentially, then you're going to have pretty good time you're gonna be pretty effective I mean like for example here I was like slow looking at the minimap and Thrall does pick me off you can see down there at the bottom there's actually nothing you can do about that so there's nothing I can do about that in terms of speed uh, unfortunately I was first pick in this map and I picked the Vikings our team captain decided to ban out Li Ming instead of Falstad so that made things tough I also asked him to ban Zeratul in the second ban phase he didn't but luckily the enemy team opted into Kerrigan instead of Zeratul um, but there's a couple of heroes that are just going to wreck wreck the vikings um falstad he could just fly on top of one of the squishier vikings hits him with the hammer hits him with the w uh and i mean you can't see it coming it's impossible to see it coming so you can predict it to a certain extent but for the most part like you're just gonna lose vikings to that there's nothing you can do same if they've got a zero tool also a nova tracer kind of can do it but her damage is obviously lower than those other heroes but yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of heroes that can really life, make your life miserable. You can see them just kind of trying to stay safe at this point. And this is when the Vikings sort of come into their own. Uh, it's definitely difficult as well, playing one in each lane. Uh, and you can see I'm trying my best to tab around all of them. But it does take a little bit of time. If you want to tab around quickly, you can use the 1, 2, and 3 key. Uh, for example, the 1 key is for Olaf. Balog is on 2, Eric's on 3. If you tap it once, you select that hero. If you ta double tap it, you select them and go to where their camera is. So, uh, uh, yeah, and as you can see on the minimap as well, when you start taking damage, your, like, health pings will pop up. I was kind of annoyed at myself for that one, because that was a really silly way to die. Uh, but yeah, um, apart from that, though, I'm just kind of taking things very easy, picking up a uh, Bribe and then Merc Lord. It's very nice. There's actually Falstad arriving. I was a bit slow to see that, and then definitely getting hit by the hammer is a mistake. If I dodge that hammer... Well, number one, I should have really... It was a little bit weirdly displayed in the bush, but I should have seen that coming sooner. Should have moved out of the way sooner and should have dodged the hammer. So, I mean, like, there's just a couple of examples already of, like, really messing up uh, some of the mechanical uh, things right here. But yeah, normally the Vikings, they'll do quite well during the night phase here in Garden of Terror. So they're strong in this map for a couple of reasons. Number one, you have, like, this night phase, which draws people away, and it's a big map. Um, this draws people into the middle, and this lets you get a lot of value out of soaking those side lanes. You're just sitting in those side lanes all the time, just generating a whole ton of XP. If the enemy team comes to deal with you, then they cannot be taking those uh, the side bits. Uh, they can't be taking the uh, objective, so your team can hopefully get a lead in the objective and do pretty well. There's also lots of mercs for you to work with, uh, with Merc Lord or Bribe. And then when you do get the Garden Terror, uh, you can put a single Viking inside of it. And then the other two are free to keep doing their thing around the map. So yeah, certainly night phase is when like your first sort of power spike, uh, whenever you're in a night phase, and then your second big power spike will be whenever you actually get inside a Garden Terror. So right here, this is pretty cool actually. I just have Bribe stacks coming up. I said, hey look, well Olaf can't really push in top safely at the moment, uh, and uh, I'm actually really near to their siege camp, so I'll just go and steal their siege camp. Kind of denies it from them, does a little bit of work. I was trying, obviously, to stay close. I actually brought Olaf and Balog down into that mid lane. I was kind of hoping to push in because we had double siege camp right there, but uh, the enemy team did kind of respond fairly quickly. Our team comp is fairly interesting. I wasn't a massive fan of it. It was okay. I kind of felt like the uh, the Dahaka in particular was like, mm, you're kind of picking that for global soak, right? However, that's what I'm doing with the Vikings. So I'm not entirely sure about the Dahaka. It probably works out okay, I guess. But 
Um, it was kind of funny. We banned out like Li Ming, and then our team captain also banned out Sylvanas. And like two of those are two of the best here as they put with the Vikings. So that was kind of unfortunate. We're still making the most of it as we can. As you can see here, just again trying to push down these lanes, trying to uh, survive this thrall. There we go. We do get away from the thrall. And this is going to be pretty nice. Our teammates have actually done, I have to say, a very good job in actually picking up Merc Camps for us, which really, really helps us out. Um, it's very important to do when you're playing with the Vikings, is um, like on a team with them, is to help them out by getting those Merc Camps. Um, so you have the freedom to pick up Merc Camps because the Vikings are soaking the experience. And then the Merc Camps pushing down the lanes with the Vikings, especially if they get Merc Lord, is going to be extremely effective. You can see here, for example, Thrall was trying to go aggressive. Uh, I was actually able to kind of duel him almost one-on-one -on -one with Olaf, which is kind of cool. Uh, I do ultimately lose because he's Thrall, but we do put up a pretty good fight with the minion wave there and him being on somewhat low life. So that was kind of fun, kind of interesting. But yeah, as you can see, for the most part, what I'm trying to focus on doing is literally just staying in those lanes, trying to be safe, not fully succeeding, but certainly trying to be safe, trying to push down those lanes when I can, and if not, you know, just staying there, staying safe, and trying to soak that experience. This is unfortunate. Falstad is once again doing his thing. Nothing you can do about that. And then getting distracted by the Falstad killing Eric down there. And then paying the price with the life of Olaf up at the top. So that's definitely one way to beat the Vikings. Or something I struggle with anyway. Because I, I barely ever play these guys, right? It's just a, an occasional thing. On, usually on Garden of Terror. Um, you can really wreck them. Or I really struggle with you know, two things happening at once. If they try to kill two of your, hero, your Vikings at once, it becomes very difficult to sort of tab around the map and take control of that. Uh, for example, right there, again, nothing can do about that. Uh, Falsa's going to kill this. I was freaking out at this point. I was like, dude, what are you doing? She bust out the pings like mad right there. Uh, so this was kind of telling me the Dahaka didn't really know how to play with the Vikings. It's like the Dahaka pick doesn't go that well. And then you never, ever, ever take the Garden Terror when you got the Vikings uh, on your team. You let the Vikings do it. <laughs> Our teammates, unfortunately, did die up top. Uh, to be honest, you're not going to... I don't know. You, you don't necessarily need to pay too much attention to what your team are doing. You're kind of hoping that your team are going to be okay on their own uh, for the start of the game. And then it's into the later part of the game that you start to uh, coordinate with your team more. So this is going on. I'm sending Balog up top. He's the strongest pushing Viking. He's going to push up top. Uh, I actually have Eric down here. I'll probably move him away relatively soon. And I'm pushing in with the uh, Terror uh, down the bottom. Um, this is basically you're going to want to push pretty aggressively if you can. And um, this enemy team is going to put a big defense. So Eric is a little bit kind of out of position. So I'm going to move him back. Make sure he can't be killed by that. Actually move him into enemy fire right here. He barely, barely escapes. It's going to move him back up to that mid lane. Start him soaking that mid lane. While I push down here on the bottom with the terror. But now you can see the garden terror coming into effect. I'm pushing down the front wall of the bottom lane. Uh, because the enemy team all has to fight here in the middle. I'm also soaking up the top. Getting some XP. So we're starting to generate a bit of an XP lead. Going to send Eric now into that mid lane as well. And he's going to be able to soak up some of that mid lane XP. And hopefully we're going to start generating a lead. You see we're already a little bit up. Important as well. Actually this falls that way out of position. Uh, you can obviously kill heroes with a terror as well. Don't forget that. Uh, so I have my thing coming off cooldown once again. So I'm just going to go fairly hard here I think. I might have left that, that terror without instructions. I'm not sure. You can also set up a shift command, so you know, tab things around. This is also a mistake if you look here. I thought I had Olaf selected, in fact didn't. In fact I brought Eric, uh, was running Eric down towards that bottom lane instead of running Olaf back. So that was a little bit of a mechanical misplay. It's like, why is Eric standing still? What the, or why is Olaf standing still after doing the jump? Oh, I see, I chose Eric and I moved him in. Oh dear, Eric might die now as well as Olaf, that's pretty bad. But Olaf did escape actually in the end and that's cool. I decided to steal this Merc camp again with Bribe, why not? So, uh, Balog here, again, the false is just going to kill him. Nothing you can do. It's basically, you just have to look at it as an opportunity cost, right? Is that, yeah, he's going to use flight to kill your Vikings. But it means that he's not using flight for other stuff. I'm just trying to slow him down as much as possible at this point. I'm not actually expecting to achieve anything, and I didn't really. Um, have Balog here in the mid lane. Empowering that siege camp. Actually run him in, or sorry, Eric there. Run him in for that. That's okay, because I have play again, and I want to play again because they're both dead. Maybe not worth it for a regen globe. I maybe should just play it again instead of giving that little bit of XP over. But gotta collect them regen globes. And I don't recommend it. De definitely don't do that. But it, it's fun though. <laughs> anyway, I have all my Vikings right here. I figure, what the hell? We'll start take out this Merc camp. We might as well. Our lanes are pretty pushed up. It would take me quite a while to get there. So I said, Merc camp. 
I can obviously do it very quickly. This would be a pretty useful thing I can do for my team right now. So there you go, grab that one. And I'm going to run up and grab this siege camp at the same time as well. Keeping an eye down bottom here, actually, I was considering maybe pushing in. Our teammates are actually winning a fight pretty well. Um, as you can see, though, the enemy team death timers are significantly shorter than ours because we are now two levels up. The level lead is kind of starting to go a little bit out of control. Going to send Olaf down to the bottom lane to help out with that. Going to send Balog, I see... Oh, no, Eric? I forget which one I sent. I sent one of them top, though. And I'm going to send the other one to push down mid lane. And again, just try to spread that pressure out. Just be really difficult. Yeah, sending Eric uh, top because he's the fastest. Keeping Balog here to push. And I have Olaf here to back up my team. Again, he is once again empowering those mercenaries that are with us. The Bruisers and the Siege Camps. The Siege Giant here in the mid lane also being empowered. Uh, doing a whole bunch of bonus damage. Very nice indeed. We actually take out that, that keep because of that. I'm going to take Olaf under control now and push in as much as I can. Pushing in with Eric as well. Baylog is going to move him back out of range of that tower. Make sure not to leave them in the tower range, being shot by stuff if you can. Uh, or even being hit by minions, really, if you can. Just move him back behind your minion wave and then attack him back in. And going very aggressive with the old Olaf here because we can. Why not? Helping out our team. Just stalling out the enemy team. Again, the longer we stall them out, the bigger the victory is for us. Nice moves by our teammates there, picking that up. Olaf is going to die, but that's okay. We're getting a whole lot of value. <laughs> Rhaegar is saying, like, let me breathe, guys. I think he's finding the game very intense. So the enemy team does pick up several kills, which is unfortunate. I think only Dahaka actually makes it out alive. That's all right. Just right. I'm just staying here, just trying to keep Balog relatively safe, while also empowering, just getting that bonus to each giant damage, I think is pretty valuable. I'm going to keep Eric pushing in. I see Thralls coming at me, so I'm just going to try to stall him out. Run into the bush. I pop the speed and juke north. He actually misses his wolf because of that. He's expecting me to keep running. So I'm actually able to escape with Balog, which is pretty nice. Um, it's pretty nice. Can't complain too much. We'll take it. Uh, definitely another misplay there, though, however. Should have jumped the, uh, the hammer. Not jumping the hammer. And then, once again, you can see being distracted by one thing completely neglecting Balog, and even after that nice juke from Thrall, this still kind of screw up and he dies. Luckily, I do have play again. This is why I pick play again as well. One of the reasons I pick it, play again, ready to go, um, and just bring those Vikings back to life. So, didn't actually lose out on any time dead, as it were, but certainly lose out a little bit of XP to the enemy team. So, I mean, a few things you can improve there, for sure. Gonna help our teams here pushing in. Again, I was kind of thinking now at this stage as well. I was like, all right, I feel like we've kind of entered the uh, sort of late game time where I really want to be grouping my team more. I'll go over the talents, by the way, at the end of this, but you'll have seen that I was kind of thinking about level 16 talent. I picked up one called Impatience is a Virtue, which is kind of nice. I'm um, actually, honestly, though, um, you know, leaning towards the stun for Olaf, I think might have been better. Uh, I like the Impatience as a Virtue as a little bit of a crutch, just because it reduces the cooldown of play again. So when I do screw up and let those Vikings die, it lets me stay alive. Uh, now, we've got a pretty nice situation here. we got Siege Giants very healthy pushing up top. I'm going to push those in with the Vikings, draw some attention away. And then I'm just going to push down bottom quite hard uh, with my Terror here and try to just push onto Core effectively. Um, again, remember, Core is pretty, pretty powerful. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we can get onto the Core. The lane is open right here. So instead of going for a keep, I'm just going to go straight for core, get core damage, draw them away. I'm going to try to get my other two Vikings pushing in top. So again, pushing top lane, pushing bot lane. Uh, definitely going to split up the enemy team if they do want to come in. I do see that Thrall and Falset are on the chase behind me. I'm going to lay down my plant here to disable the mid keep just in case I need to retreat that way. Uh, then try to throw that down near it as well. I'm just going to leave my plant just whacking on the core. Why not? Gust actually comes out from Falstad. Not the best placement there on my um, my spores, but it will do. And the core is falling. Actually, it's getting distracted. And then you can see once again, I think I left them in turret range that time. They are dying. However, that's going to be game because uh, we pushed down the core. GG, there we go. Um, so pretty short game, 13 minutes, 51 seconds. We actually hit level 20 there. Enemy team was only level 17. Uh, and I just thought that was interesting to show you guys that even though, like, my mechanics were pretty damn bad, my reflexes were really slow, I was letting Viking style all over the place, my ABM was terrible, all that sort of stuff, um, we were still able to be extremely effective, and especially against Falstad as well, uh, we were able to really pull it off and be extremely effective. Viking bribery, mercenary lord, spin to win for more damage, play again, saw the use of that, jump, 
Impatience is a virtue. Then level 20 is a massive power spike for them too. You can get the uh, you can either improve play again so that um, it brings you all back to life uh, 10 seconds after, which is quite nice. I never used it myself, but it's quite nice. Uh, basically, it massively improves your team fight as well because you can just go in, you know, you hit that play again, come into a team fight. You didn't see me doing it in this game, but um, for example, when Olaf was pushing down the core kind of uh, midway-ish through the game with the team, could have gone in with play again, you know, summoned all the Vikings in and pushed in aggressively. Obviously, the danger is if they die, then you're going to be really screwed. But it makes for a very powerful team fight. They actually, they're quite strong in a team fight later in the game, especially if you pick up the stun for Olaf at 16. Very, very powerful. Uh, my preferred level 20, though, just to say, is Fury of the Storm. Uh, and the Vikings get the best version of Fury of the Storm. It just massively increases your pushing power and just your damage in general. And I just, I think it's a fantastic ability. Very, very effective. But if we look at the stats here, you can see the Vikings in action. We have 146,000 siege damage. Uh, the next best on our team is 44,000. Uh, the best on the enemy team is 70,000 from Kerrigan. Um, so really being extremely effective there. Now, obviously the terror is contributing a large part to that, but you'll still have quite high siege damage from the Vikings regardless. Our hero damage is pretty low. That's okay, that's to be expected. We didn't really fight heroes too much in this game. And then our XP contribution, as you can see, 26k. Um, that's a massive part of what you're doing with the Vikings. So yeah, I mean, there you go, guys. Just like... I hope this was kind of helpful or kind of interesting because you can see like, oh yeah, Nupkex is making all these like crazy misplays. He's just letting his Vikings be killed, like really derping up a whole bunch of stuff, but still being able to be extremely effective. So, I mean, I I, I think that applies to, to anyone kind of watching is that while you, you can learn, you know, how to move things around the map, um, the strategy is something you can learn. It's probably harder to learn mechanics in a way. And, you know, how can you learn to have faster reflexes? That's very difficult. But learning the sort of strategies and just paying attention to the mini map and moving your Vikings to the right place, that's definitely something that you can learn and improve on. And if you do pull that off, like I said, they're more about macro than they are about micro. If you're moving them in the right places, you're going to be pretty good. You're right. You're going to be pretty good, even if you're kind of slow, even if your reflexes aren't the best, you're still going to be effective at the Vikings. So don't be scared off thinking you need some like crazy, you know, Starcraft uh, pro gamer level AVM in order to do this. You Well, it would certainly help and you'd be better, but you don't need it to play these guys well. Um, just focus on soaking the XP in the lanes. Try to stay safe as much as possible. Try to, you know, if you know that their enemy hero is going to be in the lane, just leave them in a bush or leave them behind the walls, even if you want to be even safer, and just say, all right, I'll just try soak with my body. I don't actually need to be there attacking the minions. When it is safe, try to push out and attack the minions. When you see the enemy team being distracted and like they're forced to come and fight over an objective or they're forced to respond to something your teammates are doing elsewhere on the map, then go push really hard and then start to draw them away. Make them go, oh God, we really want to fight over this objective. But these Vikings are pushing down our lanes. What are we going to do? They're going to overwhelm us. And then you're going to, yeah, it's going to be work out pretty well for you. Uh, or just pick them on Garden of Terror where you can be really effective in the terror. <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyway, there you go, guys. Give it a like if you liked it. And uh, I'll see you all next time for more Heroes of the Storm. Bye-bye.